Welcome to the first installment of Bibles Down. Here on Happy Christian, we teach Christianity using what Christians believe is the Word of God, but not all people are Christians, and not all people believe in what we believe is the Word of God. So sometimes we'll make videos in which we put our Bibles down, hence the name, and we'll discuss more widely accepted facts instead of just the facts that Christians believe in. Today we'll be responding to a video called Kids Meet Someone Who Had an Abortion. As always, this video will not be telling you whether you should be pro-life or pro-choice. That decision is yours. I make decisions for me, I'm not interested in making them for you too. The reason we're making this response video is because if you watch this Kids Meet video, you'll hear a whole lot of this. I just don't agree. I wouldn't really say, I feel like if I, I think it's all, I feel supported by that. The person that they met is co-founder of Shout Your Abortion, Amelia Bono. Hi, I'm Amelia Bono. Amelia spends the majority of the video just telling these kids what her personal thoughts and feelings are. I feel this, I think that, I like this. Amelia tells these kids her opinions on things. To me, I believe that like, I that's how like, I feel. It feels like I'm, I like your take. Now don't get us wrong, we have no problem with Amelia or anyone sharing their own thoughts and feelings. And honestly, it was interesting to hear her take on the issue. But we here at How To Be Christian just figured, now that the kids got to meet Amelia and her opinions, we'd like to offer those kids the opportunity to meet something else. So this is Kids Meet The Facts. First off, we wanted to let kids meet the facts of what science teaches. Specifically what science teaches about our human lives, and more specifically, when do our human lives begin? According to teachings in science, although life is a continuous process, fertilization is a critical landmark because under ordinary circumstances, a new, genetically distinct, human organism is thereby formed. So life is a continuous process, and the point in our life when we become a genetically distinct human organism, at least under ordinary circumstances, is fertilization, also known as conception. In other words, human life begins at conception. Now this is not new information, this is what scientists have been claiming for years, there is no way around that fact. Pro-life people respect what science teaches on this matter, and pro-choice people also respect what science teaches on this matter. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of people in both of these groups believe what science teaches. Here's a conversation between Jacqueline Glenn and Hunter Avalon. They're both YouTubers, they're both atheists, but one is a pro-choice person and one is a pro-life person. Now, you mentioned you were pro-choice. I am pro-life myself. I was wondering maybe we, you want to talk about abortion a little bit. When does this life like, when does it become a life? It really comes down to science, in my opinion. What does science say? When does science say that this becomes a life? I think it is right at the beginning because, you know. I agree with you. So you agree that it is, I guess, killing an unborn baby? Uh, technically, yeah. So this is an example of how a productive conversation on the topic of abortion can start off. You don't have anyone denying the fact that abortion kills a living human being. Both sides are recognizing that fact, and they continue to have their conversation keeping that fact in mind. Now, as I said before, not everyone believes what science teaches, and Jacqueline addresses that next. One of my biggest pet peeves with people who are pro-choice is they use the argument, it's not a life. Uh, th that's a not, that's like a terrible argument to make. Like a worm is a life. Like you can't tell me it's not a life. It's a living, you know, it's, it's alive. It has its own DNA. You can't really make the argument that it's not a life. So what is the abortion conversation actually about? Jacqueline does a great job at explaining that too. The actual thing that's being brought into question is when do you place value on that life. So the intelligent person's abortion debate is not over when does life begin, because we already know the answer to that question. Human life begins at fertilization. An intelligent debate on the topic of abortion has to do with when do you place value on that life. Or more specifically, when does a human's life have enough value for other people to step in and say that another human being cannot end that human's life? Now I want to play one more section from that conversation. I think a lot of people conflate being pro-choice with you know, people who just think abortions are great. I do not think abortions are great. I feel like a lot of people who are in the position of having to decide that, it, you know, it's it's difficult for them and a lot of times very emotionally taxing. So I do think it's, you know, somewhat irresponsible and I don't like it. Now those were obviously just a few select pieces from the talk that they had, so feel free to watch the whole thing on YouTube to get a better idea of Hunter's and Jacqueline's views. But the reason I wanted to show you those clips is because I know a lot of pro-choice people were commenting on the Kids Meet video and they did not think that Amelia was a good representation of their viewpoint. There was London Y who said, I don't think she was a good person to speak for the pro-choice community and that had 1.4K likes. Nisil said she was not. Tisha Clattenburg said, totally agree. We got Marcy Diamonds. I don't think she was the right person to talk about this topic. Marcy says she's supportive of abortions, but Marcy feels like Amelia wants to be treated as a martyr when she really just seems reckless. Megan Louise says, I'm pretty pro-choice, but this chick was not the best person to have this conversation with kids. Yikes. 
Lauren White says I'm pro-choice, but I feel this woman didn't represent the topic well. She didn't really listen to the kids who didn't agree with her and seemed very unempathetic. Lauren feels that Amelia could have handled it better. Eden Rosenblitz says I'm pro-choice, but this woman was terrible about supporting the side. Janiah Nicole says that this lady is probably the worst person to talk about this because she didn't have a real reason to have an abortion. And JN wishes that Amelia was better spoken in a way that would be a teachable experience to the children. Now I'm pro-life, and I personally don't think that there is any argument that a pro-choice person could make that would justify taking a life away from a child. Because no matter what the circumstance is, that child did nothing wrong. That being said, I do think that Amelia was not the best representation of the average pro-choice person. Most pro-choice people do not have the word abortion tattooed on their lower lip. Basing things off of friends I have who are pro-choice, I find that Jacqueline's views are closer to the norm of a pro-choice person than Amelia's are. So having that out of the way, let's watch Kids Meet Amelia. When you have an abortion, what exactly do you do to like have the abortion? You go to the doctor and they put this little straw inside of your cervix and then inside of your uterus and then they just suck the pregnancy out. So Amelia describes abortion as sucking the pregnancy out. And technically, that is part of it. I would say that's a strange wording because typically pregnancy refers to a period of time when a person is pregnant. So to call abortion the sucking out of a pregnancy would be like calling your 20th birthday the sucking out of your teenage years. But basically, all Amelia is telling these kids is that abortion ends the pregnancy. Which again, it does. Amelia is correct on that. But Amelia also left out a very important part of an abortion. She left out the part about how it kills the baby. Now to me at least, and this is just my opinion, but it seems like Amelia is trying to sugarcoat what abortion actually is by just talking about the fact that it ends the pregnancy. But ending a pregnancy in itself is not a bad thing. For instance, when I was born, nine months after I came to life, the doctor successfully ended my mother's pregnancy by pulling me out of her. Or to put it in Amelia's terms, the doctor pulled out the pregnancy. Your birth successfully ended your mother's pregnancy. Amelia's birth successfully ended her mother's pregnancy. Everyone's birth successfully ends at least one pregnancy. And I specify at least one because in the case of twins, if you are the second one out, then it might be said that you end your mother's pregnancy with you, and you end your mother's pregnancy with twins. Ending a pregnancy by itself is not a bad thing. It is how the pregnancy is being ended in the case of an abortion that people view as bad. Because abortions end pregnancies by taking away the life of the child. And that's the important part that Amelia left out of her definition. She then goes on to say this about her abortion. Suck the pregnancy out. And it was like a crappy dentist appointment or something. It was just like, ah, this is like a body thing that's kind of uncomfortable. So first of all, I would love to find out whether Amelia has her upper lip tattooed to say dental work. Because seeing as she felt that the word abortion belonged tattooed on her body, and she just referred to abortion as a crappy version of dental work, it just stands to reason that she might want to tattoo a word onto her body that represents a procedure that she finds less crappy than the one she has on there. But that's just my own curiosity. Secondly, comparing an abortion to a dentist appointment, even a crappy one, is a terrible analogy. Because even in the crappiest of dentist appointments, most people, if not all people, don't go into that appointment with the intent to have the dentist end the life of their child and then walk out with clean teeth and one less living child. Why did you have an abortion? A few years ago I got pregnant and I really didn't want to have a baby. May I ask what happened? He wasn't wearing a condom. Why well, wasn't he wearing a condom? Have you ever had two options and one of them like seems easier at the time? Oh yeah, yeah. Like you could take a shortcut or yeah. you could go the long way It was way the shortcut around. version. Mm. What did your partner think at the time? You know, I think we were both like bummed out that I got pregnant. Okay, so that's Amelia's story. Notice how there is no mention of anyone or anything forcing her to take that shortcut. And I point that out because later Amelia says this. I feel like if I am forced to create life, mm -hmm. I have lost the right to my own life. So first off, note that Amelia is not saying that someone forced her to create life. She's setting up a hypothetical situation in which someone forces her to create life. She's not saying that that happened. She's saying if this happened. But that's not what most abortions stem from. And as we just heard in Amelia's story, that is not where her creation of life came from. But again, this is a hypothetical situation that she's setting up. So what does she say next? I should be the one to decide if my body creates a life. Amelia is basically saying that she wants to have control over nature. She wants to do an action that has various possible outcomes, and she also wants to have control over which of those outcomes do and don't happen. That's not how life works. That could be nice if life did work that way. I could play the lottery and then I could also choose to have the winning number. But again, that's not how life works. So kids, meet the facts. Your actions can have consequences. On the plus side, we can know some of the possible consequences of our actions before we do them. But remember, if you do an action while knowing the possible outcomes of that action, then you are at least partially responsible for whichever of those outcomes come to be. 
If you go skydiving, there is a chance that your chute does not open. And if your chute doesn't open, then your body is about to do something that you did not want your body to do. Ever have too much momentum going into a hug with a friend? Ever been friends with the Earth? What I'm saying is that it's gonna mess your body up. The point is, Amelia is saying, I should be the one to decide if my body creates a life. But according to the way things work here in reality, there's nothing that tells us that she should be the one who decides that, and there are several things, not just creating a life, that we don't decide. We take actions knowing that they have possible outcomes, and we don't always get to choose which of those outcomes our actions yield. Now kids, if you want to test out that fact, step one, get yourself a Nerf gun. Know that it will never be as cool as mine, because they stopped making the really awesome ones back in the 90s. Step two, pick a target anywhere in the room. Step three, try to hit your target. I missed. If you also missed, then congratulations. You just proved the fact. You desired a specific outcome for your actions, knowing that there was the possible outcome where you miss, and when you took your action, even though you didn't want the outcome where you missed, that's the one you got. And for anyone who actually did hit their target and they got that outcome that they were looking for, I have something for you. Do you think that sometimes it's not okay to have an abortion? I wanna say if like, if you're being reckless, if there's nothing wrong going on, I don't know, I just don't agree. So what do we do with them? Put them up for adoption. Even if you're giving a kid up for adoption, you still like have a kid out there somewhere, you know? Yeah. That kid's response of yeah is great because her statement would basically be like me saying, if I donate my Pee Wee's Playhouse to a child who wants it, I still have my Pee Wee's Playhouse out there somewhere. And that too would be a statement which that kid could very simply and easily respond to by saying yeah. You know? Yeah. Because yeah, that's true. That's how adoption works. But what is Amelia's point? What is her reasoning for saying this? On one hand, the child is living. And yeah, Amelia is correct. The child is still out there somewhere. On the other hand, the child has passed away. But that doesn't change the fact that that child is still out there somewhere. If I give my Pee Wee's Playhouse to a kid out there who wants it, then yes, my Pee Wee's Playhouse will still be out there somewhere. But if I decide nobody gets this, I might be able to get it out of my life, but I didn't make it disappear. It's still out there somewhere. So I'd like to reiterate this. You know? Yeah. That kid's got it right. Yeah. And I'd like to add to that the follow-up question of what is your point? And that's a serious question. Maybe Amelia has some great reason behind why she's saying this. But right now we can't really get much from the statement of the kid would be out there still because the kid would still be out there regardless of what happened to them. Are you religious at all? I believe in God. Mm -hmm. What do you think that God thinks about abortion? What do you think God thinks about abortion? I think it's all part of God's plan. Now that statement Amelia just made about God's plan was incredibly vague. For starters, she never even said which God she is referring to. So the folks here at How To Be Christian hopped on Twitter and asked Amelia, you mentioned believing that abortion is all part of God's plan. I was curious which God you believe in, if you don't mind sharing a bit about your faith, trying to understand your viewpoint a little better. Amelia Bono kindly replied by saying, there are so many gods I've never been able to commit to just one. So I guess when I say God's plan, I'm talking more about a gigantic aggregated compromise of hundreds of different gods and their plans, as well as a popular rap song. So what did we learn on Twitter? It turns out that what Amelia is labeling as God's plan is actually the plan of multiple gods. So it seems like it would be more accurately written as God's plan, which is still not a perfect wording for it because as Amelia wrote, she is talking about a gigantic aggregated compromise of hundreds of different gods and their plans, which means that a more accurate wording than God's plan or even God's plan would actually be Amelia's plan, which is loosely based on an aggregation of multiple plans of multiple gods. So now that we know all that from Amelia herself, let's watch that section again. I believe in God. So we know he's talking about one God, one singular God. What do you think God thinks about abortion? And then he's asking her a question about that one God, that one singular God. And Amelia responds by saying this. I think it's all part of God's plan. Which to that kid and to anyone who's watching that video, it certainly sounds like she's saying that that kid's God, that singular God, it's part of his plan. But we heard How To Be Christian had a hunch, and it paid off. We went straight to the source, and we learned what she meant by God's plan. And it turns out she's not talking about that kid's God. She's actually not even telling him about any God's plan unless she herself is a God, because what she's telling him is Amelia's plan, which is loosely based on an aggregation of multiple plans of multiple gods. Now on Twitter we did thank Amelia for clarifying, and she thanked us for being nice. The reason we wanted to show you that exchange is because there has been a lot of name calling towards Amelia, and Amelia even says this in her video. Have you ever been like attacked online by pro-life people? Yes. Now the name calling that I've seen has been coming from both sides. Pro-life people, pro-choice people, people who just aren't fond of Amelia's views, and or the ways that she handled this conversation with those kids. But no one needs to make fun of Amelia. Amelia is a person. Just like I'm a person and you're a person, we're all fellow human beings. 
since the moment of our conception. The point is, mature conversations don't need that name calling. Wait a second, you have the guy playing with Nerf guns in Pee Wee's Playhouse, giving advice on mature conversations? I believe that like life begins when a person has a baby. Oh. So the main focus of the rest of the video is pretty much when does life begin, which we already know the answer to. And to give her credit, Amelia does bring up what science teaches, at least in passing. Clearly like some people believe that life begins at conception. Now kids, what Amelia just said there, that's correct. And to elaborate on that fact, those people are called scientists, atheists, Christians, pro-choice people, pro-life people, Marvel movie fans, DC movie fans, oscillating fan fans. And those are just some of the people who believe in the fact that life begins at conception. And then the fetus is in a lady's tummy. And, yes, sir. Or in the womb. It's not really a human being yet. I That's how I feel. When it comes to the kids in this video, I think it's understandable that they'll make some mistakes when they're talking. From the video, it seems like they're just placed into this situation without prior knowledge of what they're going to talk about. Um, so what, what are, are we here, here to talk, talk about, about today? today? So it's not like they could do the research and then come prepared. But I think an interesting thing about this comment the girl makes is Amelia's reaction to it. It's not really a human being yet. I <laughs> That's how I feel. So the idea that we're not a human yet is false. And I kind of get the impression that Amelia knows that already because she's not telling the girl, that's right. She says, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. But the fact isn't going to change based on Amelia's feelings. If you told me that Tom Hanks is not a real person, and then I responded by saying, that's how I feel too. That doesn't mean that Tom Hanks just disappears from existence. Even if we all have a feeling that Tom Hanks is not a real person, it's not going to change the fact that Tom Hanks is real. Hashtag Tom Hanks is real. If we can get that trending, that would be great because I'd love for Tom Hanks to look at Twitter and just be like, what? Is this, was this a question? Colin? It's not really a human being yet. Yeah, I kind of like to compare it to like a sea cucumber. It's not thinking, it's just <laughs> living. It's like your arm is not capable of complex thought. Neither is a baby inside your, your womb. I like your take. So again, here we're seeing the same type of thing. Someone's saying something that's incorrect, and then she doesn't say that they're right. She says, I like your take. I like your take. Well, I like facts. So kids, no matter how old you are, no matter what level of complex thought you're capable of, you remain a human throughout it all. And as far as that idea for not qualifying as a human because you can't have complex thought, whatever that idea of complex thought means to you, imagine you go to a graveyard and you dig down six feet. You start opening up those boxes you find down there, and you likely will not find what you classify as complex thought from the contents of those caskets. But the question is, what are you finding in the casket? Are they humans? And again, as for the kid who gave the faulty information, we know that this was not a prepared conversation. It was not on you to have all the facts straight. But for someone like Amelia, who has the topic tattooed to her lip, I would have expected that she would be able to explain what I just explained instead of just saying, I like your take. At the end of the day, it's my body and the idea that a group of like old White dudes. White dudes in the government would Say tell no. me, yeah. So then we finish up with Amelia doing the my body, my choice routine, which doesn't make any sense because it's not her body. It's the child's body. When a woman's pregnant and the baby kicks, they don't say, I kicked myself. They say, the baby just kicked me because there's two bodies there. There's the mother's body and there's the baby's body. And sometimes there's a busybody who's just kind of off in the corner watching like a busybody. And as far as the old white dudes in government are concerned, oh, and also the young white dudes in government are concerned, and also the men and women of any age or race in the government are concerned, I doubt they really care much about what Amelia, myself, you, or anyone does with their own body. The issue of abortion is that it's one person, or multiple people if you include spouses and doctors, attacking another person's body and ending the life of that other person. If somebody is using their body to swim or go for a bike ride or eat nachos on a park bench while bird watching, the people in the US government usually don't care about any of that. We can all do what we want with our own bodies. It's when we start doing things with our bodies that cause trouble, injury, or death to another person's body that the people in the government step in. Actions such as stabbing are okay if you're stabbing a pumpkin, for example. But if you replace the pumpkin with a human's heart, then people tend to get upset. Actions such as firing a gun are okay if you're firing a gun at a paper target, for example. But if you replace the paper target with a human stomach, then people tend to get upset. Actions such as vacuuming are okay. If you're vacuuming up some dust bunnies, for example. But if you replace the dust bunnies with human body parts, then people tend to get upset. And then they just suck the pregnancy out. So again, this video is not being made to tell anyone which side they should choose. That decision is yours to make. 
And I would advise that you look at both sides. Find out who's telling you the truth. Check out that conversation that Hunter and Jacqueline had. Find other conversations where both sides are being honest about the fact of when life begins. And one good thing that I think we can all take away from the Kids Meet video is the way that the kids interacted with Amelia. They listened to what she had to say, they shared their thoughts, and they were respectful to her. So this final fact comes mainly from the kids. People can have differing opinions, and you can still be friends with those people. So maybe try to keep that in mind when you're having these kind of conversations. Thank you all for listening. This is How to Be Christian. Tom Hanks is real. And you all have a great day.